My name is Kari Homer and I'm a fine artist uh, based in London, originally from Japan, Tokyo. I've been living in this country a uh, good 18, 18 years now. It's, I don't know, I, I need to probably go back to the beginning to explain where I am now uh, because um, it's a bit of journey that I've been through um, to be happy with what I'm doing now. Um, it, um, when I actually started um, art college in Japan, um, basically um, I had a bit of um, crisis in terms of you know the expression. You know what what should I do? You know what what would be my um, real destiny as an artist? You know, uh, should I be painting? Should I be sculpting? Um, and it's also kind of made it even more complicated, the fact that I uh, found uh, my personal faith in uh, Christian um, faith. And that's actually quite um, unusual because uh, I don't know if you know the fact that uh, in Japan there's only 0.01% uh, Christian population. It, it is. It was quite hard, and so I got to the point that you know I may not be able to continue. And also, you know, the, the, the feeling that um, even um, accelerated even more the fact that you know I'm not doing anything kind of useful to the humanity, <laughs> you know, uh, doing contemporary um, crazy art. Um, and that was at least sort of you know starting point. You know, as I started to really kind of delve into the more sort of contemporary cutting edge activities with the, that sort of understanding that you know, that kind of urge to create and do something was actually embedded in human existence and that was quite refreshing at the beginning um, and so that's when I started to do a lot of casting and uh, object um, and especially using uh, Japanese mulberry paper and um, yeah, sort of tra the idea of tracing object was quite important to me. So it wasn't sort of creating, but it's actually responding to the um, surroundings and the environment and reinterpreting them uh, through the actual process um, formed my uh, basis of my um, practice initially. Um, so I was sort of continuing that kind of activities and then my work got bigger when my, I became mother because I suppose partially it's a sort of, I don't know, um, yeah, it, I think it was to do with the rebelliousness or sort of trying to prove that I'm still here. <laughs> I may not be going, you know, going to all the um, meetings at the pubs and, um, you know, private views, you know, um, and socialising. Um, you know, but I, I, you know, I wanted to sort of continue my practice, and I wanted to be taken, you know, seriously. You know, so my work has actually got bigger. And during that period, I, I produced this um, piano piece that I cast, uh, casted the grand piano uh, with this uh, mulberry paper. So I was doing a couple of those uh, large projects, um, and also I did a series of um, works which is to do with the memorials and memories and um, it was sort of triggered uh, with the VJ Day commemoration um, and it's sort of trying to look at the history from um, private and personal pers you know, perspective um, against perhaps sort of more um, corporate and communal in you know, aspect of those you know, uh, memories. Uh, you know, it's the same event, you know, but it's actually perceived from two completely different perspectives, and it's remembered in a completely different way. And you know, that sort of really interested me. So I was, you know, going through those activities, and I thought I'd learned a lot about the sort of you know individual families. In a process of grieving and commemoration, yeah. And then, but then, 
that's when the, the whole sort of big thing actually happened. When um, year 2000, um, I nearly lost my daughter with a big uh, brain hemorrhage. And um, so that was sort of my turning point, I suppose, as an artist. Um, I was still, you know, figuring it out and how this would actually work out in the long run. Um, but I'm sort of just beginning to see the, the reason why I have always been interested in paper uh, through that experience of um, yeah, sort of losing the, the most precious thing in the world and then also sort of losing the um, you know, one's sort of belief that you know, nearly um, you you held that was intact, intact, uh, and yet um, it wasn't. Um, so that's a sort of re real sort of scary experience. That you know, I couldn't even pray. You know, it's that blankness, and yet, and yet, you know, um, there is something that. Um, Yeah, it made me think even more about the, the my personal faith in a way that perhaps I suppose you know non-believer wouldn't necessarily share my view, you know, but you know, there's something beyond that departure. And that sort of made me even you know more think about um, the activity that I'm doing now. That's why I started to actually burn those objects that I made and um, people would just kind of sh get shocked. In fact, my gallery in Tokyo, <laughs> so the reaction was really interesting because that was, I suppose, you know, I, I was actually start, you know, I, they thought I was going completely mad, um, I suppose, I don't know, um, because I was sort of started to burn their merchandise. <laughs> um, but. Um, but to me, it's quite logical. Um, I mean, I'm not only just looking at sort of destructive aspect of uh, burning object, but I'm actually looking at it through the con contrast be um, between the sort of uh, modernist notion of um, tra um, transcendence versus this transience and yeah, so um, I, I really sort of echo the idea that uh, the statement that Eva, he Eva Hesse actually said um, before she died of you know, brain cancer. And she must, yeah, she, that was in 1960s, but she said something like, um, yeah, art, art doesn't, no, life doesn't last, art doesn't last, and it doesn't matter. And that's what she said. Um, and I really emphasise with that um, idea. Although I don't agree with the final um, conclusion, I, I think it matters even more because it doesn't last. <laughs>